Hi, this is LaRosa Johnson with WordSearch Bible Software. I want to welcome you to another WordSearch tutorial video. Today we're going to start taking a look at some of our Greek resources. I'm a big fan of studying the Greek and I'm a big fan of using Greek resources using Bible study software, particularly WordSearch. So what I want to show you are some Greek resources and how you can use them in WordSearch to advance your studies and to dig deeper into the text. One of the first ones I want to show you is one of my favorites. It's BDAG, which is the Greek English Lexicon. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take you really quick through how BDAG is set up and how you can look at it and know what you're looking for. And then I'm going to show you how you can use it in word search and how you can quickly get to different things in word search in BDAG and tie it all together so that you can use it as a resource to really help elevate your studies. So let's go ahead and open up BDAG. You can find it under Word Studies, and then it's right here, BDAG Greek English Lexicon. Or you can just use your filter up here and type in BDAG, or you use the quick, the quick open using the F9. So we can see here that BDAG is opened up, and it's got a whole lot of text. And we can see here that we're on the word agape, just from what I was studying earlier. And so you can see you got your your entry here, and then you got this eta sigma, and basically what that is, it's showing you the genitive singular ending for for agape. So you have your nominative singular here, which is just your dictionary form. Then you get your genitive singular, so you get agape. Then you also get your your definite article, which in this case is hey showing us that this is a feminine a feminine noun. So from there you get some basic information which I'm not really going to go into explain a whole lot. What I will do is I will link to a PDF that Dr. Rod Decker has done that really goes in and thoroughly explains what BDAG is and how to use it. But I just want to give you a quick rundown of how, how you can use this work. So the first thing that we see is it's it's broken down into a couple of different categories and bullet points. So the first thing that we see here is bullet point one. And then if you scroll down, you see bullet point two. And then there can be any number of bullet points depending on how thorough the word is and how often it's used. But in this particular case, we've got two main bullet points. So we got point one and point two. And then underneath that, you can also have other bullet points. Like in this case, we have a hollow bullet point for A breaking that down into another level under our main category one and then that can even be broken down even further and that's by doing first your Greek letters so alpha, beta, gamma and then if there is another category under that you start getting into your Hebrew characters so we get olive, bait and so on. Now, now that you know how it's structured and set up how do you actually begin to read BDAG? First, you're going to see that there's a whole lot of things that are abbreviated. Like you see up here, GK, lit, a sepulchral, INS, prob, honoring, a polytheistic army officer, and so on. So you want to know what all these mean. Well, the nice thing about word search is that we've gone in and covered most of these. So all the ones that you see in red, you can hover over them and you can quickly find out what it means. So like, let's hover over GK, you can find out that it means Greek, then lit is either literally, literal, literature, or something like that. You can kind of really figure it out from the context, or prob is probable or probably. And then some of these works you can cover over and you can find out more information, like Greco-Roman, so on, Anno Domini. And it just really shows a whole lot of different things for as far as abbreviations go. Now, getting into the main bullet points, the really one thing I really like about BDAG is it's not like your typical Greek English lexicon where it only gives you an English gloss. And a gloss is basically a translation of that word and how it might be translated in an English text. But the nice thing about BDAG is that it gives you a full dictionary definition. So like what we have for agape under point number one is we have this text right here, the quality of warm regard for an interest in another. That's our that's our definition right there. 
That's what this word means. And then you see all these other words in italics after that. These, these are our English glosses. These are what you would find in most other lexicons. So the quality of one regard for an interest in another is our dictionary definition that we're working with. And then agape might be translated in that particular sense as esteem, affection, regard, or love. So that's how you can begin to read BDAC. Anything that's in italics in your main definition are going to be your glosses. But the first part of that is definitely going to be your definition. And then you come in here, you can see for like agape you get some other subcategories like it's broken down into human love and then the love of God in Christ and then it's broken down even further from there and then you get all kinds of scripture references it, it just is ridiculous the amount of information you can get from BDAG and then you get down to your secondary definition a common meal eaten by early Christians in connection with their worship for the purpose of fostering and expressing mutual affection and concern so it can also be translated as fellowship meal or a love feast so that's another way that it can be translated it's not just um, the idea of, of love, which is kind of interesting to know. So, let's say you're doing some study. Now, typically you're not going to just have BDAG open and just st start studying it. You're going to use it as a part of your, your Bible study. So let's go ahead and open up a Bible and I'll show you some of the ways you, that you can use BDAG in your studies. So I've got the HCSB open. And one of the reasons why I have the HCSB is because it's tagged with Strong's numbers. You can also use the KJV or the New American Standard. Both of those also have the Strong's numbers attached to them. And you'll understand why in just a minute. So let's say we got our Bible open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. And we're just reading through, we're studying it, and a couple of words come to our attention that we want to do some more studying on. And the only reason I'm using this example is this because it's one that um, Dr. Deckard uses in his explanation for using BDAG for um, for exegetical studies and for exegesis. So we're reading through this passage and we see it's talking about the wisdom of this age and the rulers of this age and it's also talking about how the rulers of this age are going to come to nothing. So we want to come in and find out what it means to come to nothing. So in word search, a quick way to get to what that Greek word is, is to just double click on it. We could come up here and turn Strong's on and click on the Strong's number, but let's skip all that. Let's just double click on it. And what you see here is it opens up our Strong's Dictionary. Now the nice thing about BDAG is that we went in and we took the time to actually make BDAG Strong Synced. So anywhere there's an entry in the Strong's Dictionary, if, there, if that word is in BDAG, then it's going to automatically link. So we've opened up our Strong's Dictionary, so if we come back over to BDAG, it's automatically going to be switched over to that word. So we see here we got the word katargeo, and we get another definition, and so on. So for this particular one, we got four main definitions. So we got our first one, to cause something to be unproductive. So use up, exhaust, or waste would be glosses for that. And that one's found in Luke 13.7. And then we get our second definition, to cause something to lose its power or effectiveness. Then we get a whole slew of passages there. But the one that we're going to find of particular interest to us is number three, to cause something to come to an end or to be, or to be no longer in existence. So to abolish, wipe out, or set aside. And the reason why this one is of particular interest is because we find our passage down here, 1 Corinthians 2, 6, being linked. So, the thing is here, it gives us a basic definition, doomed to perish. So, we want to go in and take a look at that, and that gives us a, big, a basic translation of, of the Greek text there. And so, the way this particular lexicon is set up is saying that in 1 Corinthians 2, 6, that katergeto is meaning for something to come to an end or to no longer be in existence. But we may not necessarily think that's the case. It could be another category because, again, a dictionary like this isn't God-breathing inspired. It's still based off judgment and everything. 
So we want to find out what's actually being talked about here as far as who's no longer going to be in existence. Because are we talking about humans? Are we talking about demons or something? We want to find out more. So we want to go in and look at rulers. So we go in, go in and just double click on that. Because that's who's being talked about as far as who are, who are the ones that are going to come to nothing. Then we see here that it's the word Archon. So we come back over here to BDAG and we see it's Archon. So that's the nominative singular form of it. Then we have the ending Antas. So Archontas is the <clears throat> is the genitive singular. And then we also see the definite article Ha showing that it's masculine. So we see here we got two main entries. So the first one is here, then the second one down here. Then we also get a very basic definition up here at the very beginning. So one who is in a position of leadership, especially in a civic capacity. So that's a nice basic definition that we want to work with far as the whole umbrella of this term. But then you can break it down even further. So we get our main category number one. One who has eminence in a ruling capacity. And then it's broken down into three other categories. So we get of earthly figures, which we find in Matthew, Acts. Then we also get a passage in First uh, Clement. It's also used of Christ. So Christ is referred to as an archon in Revelation 1.5. Then we also see of transcendent figures. And in this particular case, um, evil spirits or those who whose hierarchies resembled human political institutions and you can kind of go in and read the whole entry there. And in most cases it's talking about the devil and referring to, to the devil in that particular case. And we come down here and we see our passage down here. So 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8 is labeled in this category. So he's thinking that this is referring to evil spirits. So then we come down to our second definition. Because you don't want to just stop there. It's really important to read the whole definition. So then we get down here to the second one. Generally one who has administrative authority. So someone who's a leader or official. And then it says here for 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 8, C, C above. And it's a typo of 1B, but it should be 1C. But even still, so he's kind of saying that there is some question about that as far as how it's being used, where it could be referring to just general authority, but he feels that it should be categorized as evil spirits. So this is a case where you want to go in and do some more work because generally this is broken down into either Jewish leaders or Gentile officials. And then as you kind of go through, you do some work and going through like reading the article that Dr. Decker did explaining how to use BDAG, this is the passage that he used, and you would see that through some own, through your own work you'd find out that everywhere that Archon is used in a singular instance it can refer to like demons or the devil or someone like that, but whenever it's used in a plural sense in scripture it's always referring to, to human authority. So in this particular case, why would this one instance refer to some kind of higher higher authority such as like evil spirits? So in doing that, that kind of has theological implications for how you translate that passage. But that's that. Now, let's say you get a really long entry and you're having trouble finding your passage. How can you quickly find it without scrolling through and trying to find it and missing it without kind of going through reading the whole thing word for word. You just kind of want to quickly find where your word is categorized. One way I found to do that is by using the cross reference explorer. So let's open up the cross reference explorer. And I'll go ahead and close my Bible just to give us a little more room. So we got the cross reference explorer here, and one thing I do is I go in and make some collections, which I've covered in a previous video. But you'll see here I've got one for word studies, which is basically just everything in the word study category. 
So we'll come here, select Word Studies, and we'll just use the same passage that we were already at. So 1 Corinthians 2, 6. And we'll let that run. And what you'll see in doing this is that you can use a cross reference explorer to quickly find your passage. So we come down here, we find BDAG, and we know the word that we're looking at is our cone. So we just click on here, and we see here quickly that it's used twice in this def in this entry. So then we come over here and it's highlighted for you. So we see it here highlighted in blue. We see it down here highlighted in blue. So it's a quick way to find it. So let's take a look at another one. This one's probably a little bit longer. And since this is a longer entry, it takes you still right to it. Right here and right here. So it brings it up in view. You can scroll up. Find out the main category that it's talking about. And then kind of work your way down to the subcategory where it is actually being referred to. So here it's under like subcategory B of sub point two. And then so you want to go through and read that. Then you get a bunch of other parallel passages that are using the word in the same way. So that's a really quick way to, to find the passage that you're looking for in your studies. If you can't just quickly glance at the, the definition to find what you're looking for. And then again, like we already said, you can just double click on a word to get the strongs. And then if the word is in strongs and BDAG, It'll automatically sync up because of the Strong's numbers being used in the background. So that's a quick rundown of how you can use BDAG. And again, I've got a link at the end of this video to the article that Dr. Decker did, giving you like the full history of BDAG, and also a really thorough rundown of how it's actually used and what everything means. So I encourage you to check that out. I encourage you to add BDAG to your library. So until our next time, may God bless you.